very acclaimed comedian. When all is said and done, would you move back to... Fuck, what's the Coral term? Coral yeah. <laughs> 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 My brain went completely blank. <laughs> Hello and welcome along to the Community Notice Board. Let's do it. Welcome cool. everyone to another episode of Community Notice Board Podcast, a podcast about the suburbs we grew up in, landmarks, histories, local legends, and coming of age tales. We've got a very special guest today, a very funny comedian. He's on Fox Sports as well. It's Andrew Barnett, everyone. Ooh. How are you, Andrew? Boys, I am hungover, <laughs> <laughs> but doing well. Doing I'm well. Excited to be here. What I was just looking considered? up your credits actually, and because uh, <laughs> I was on, take long. <laughs> yeah. Well, I was like, oh fuck, what's the name of the show? And like, I so I looked up Narrow World of Sports, and I don't know if uh, you know this about the Wikipedia page for Narrow. Uh, world of sports but it says uh like it describes the show and then says in december 2018 james rochford and then in brackets brother of well-liked and more successful andrew rochford <laughs> like, yeah I know. that's a weird How slam to put just on <laughs> wikipedia it's like almost like expected then to say and handsome funnier co-host andrew barnett <laughs> and then like the edits are a barnett <laughs> mate that's uh, whoever updates those pages um is very very uh very very honored i don't know who does it mm. or whatever because we had to look it up for something once for the show um and uh because yeah we had an idea and then but the person who was doing it was putting all the ratings up like and had like they do the overnight ratings like within two days of the ratings being yeah, published right. like, mm. what is <laughs> what is your who life is this person yeah. <laughs> yeah. it's like honey you come down for dinner and hold on man. i gotta do the ratings i need to know the non-metropolitan <laughs> ratings <laughs> oh i fucking made a typo Oh, I love it. Yeah, I love it. And that's uh, so like it brings us really to like this pod really because I we do a lot of research for this pod and so I'm trawling through all the Wikipedias and even like um, some of the fucking old historical detailed information that I assume no one like really should ever care about until we do a fucking podcast about that town yeah. and we want to find every little funny detail. But you're from Korowa, right? Yes. Korowa, uh, is it? That's yeah. how you pronounce it? It is pronounced Korowa, a little uh, town nestled on the banks of the mighty Murray River uh, down on the yeah. New South Wales Victorian border. Home of Federation, I'm led to believe. Birthplace of Federation. There we That's, go. Uh, it's, uh, yeah, something we're very proud of. I bet you that you got drilled that into that every year yeah, in school. Yeah. Is that Mate, I actually, a, um, that was that was a big thing because Centenary Federation, I don't know if you guys remember the celebrations, uh, 2001, nothing else significant happened that year. <laughs> 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 well, I'm pretty sure it was just the Centenary Federation. That's all anyone remembers. Yeah. Um, but in the lead up to that, um, so I believe it was like in 1896, they had the first meeting f to discuss federation. It was held in Korowa. Um, because before that, um, Australia wasn't so much a country as just a bunch of different colonies. Mm. Um, massive pain in the ass, yes. um, from what I learned at school. In you know that if you wanted to take a cake across the river to uh, to a relative who lived in Wagania, um, you know you'd have to pay uh, like tax on the cake. You know, flour. Yeah, well, great uh, excuse yeah. if you don't want to go to family events, though. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. I can't, I can't afford the toll to come to my nephew's fourth birthday or whatever. You know. Yeah. So they were really so that the border towns were really pushing for it, right? Yeah, like, yeah. That's why. Um, bit of trivia for you. Albury apparently has the longest, um, longest train platform in the southern hemisphere, because back in those days, Victorian trains ran on a different gauge to mm, the trains right. in New South Wales. So if you caught the train from Sydney to Melbourne, you had to get out, walk along the plane, and just get on a completely different train <laughs> in Albury. <laughs> <laughs> so that you could cross over and go to Victoria. Jesus that is Christ. insane. Yeah. So, but an incredibly um, lame thing I did was we... Uh, so in the, when they announced the, um, the, that they'd formed the committee to discuss the celebrations for the centenary of uh, Federation... It, they announced that uh, I think it was Barry Unsworth was the uh, was going to be the chair of it, former New South Wales Premier, mm. um, and they were they were announcing it in uh, Centennial Park at a bit of a media event, and uh, myself and some other um, people from Coral High School were sent up as representatives of the birth, birthplace of Federation uh, <laughs> oh, wow. to do the Federation rap. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. Oh, this is like the original Hamilton. Oh. Yeah, it's coming out fire. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it was the young Lynn well Miranda. Uh, Lynn Miranda. <laughs> <Lynn Wilmer, laughs> just going, you know what? <laughs> I got no idea. Uh, oh, Do you remember any shit. of it? 
Uh, I re- oh, that, well, Quick was smart. He knew what to do. He said, uh, and then I, uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, it was so all that. It was yeah about Doctor Quick. Was Dr. Quick. Yeah. Yeah. Is there yeah. any conceivable way we could find the lyrics or a recording of it or anything? I don't know because my bro- it was a bit of a family thing because a few years before when the actual the a- anniversary of the meeting in Corowa happened, um, we were visited by then Prime Minister um, Mr. Paul Keating, mm-hmm. uh, the Right Honourable, and uh, my brother performed it in the Corowa Courthouse where the uh, where the um, the meeting took place. <laughs> they performed it for him there, and right. you know, you know how much he loved his rap. Yeah. <laughs> I believe his uh, second title was Soccer MC. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Exactly. He was like, "Got to bring this to Sydney. You're uh, on tour. That I, rules." Got respect to him though. I uh, I went to get his autograph, and um, he was trying to talk to someone, and I was a kid, sort of just hanging around, trying to get his autograph, trying to get his autograph. Yeah. And eventually, he just turns to me. He goes, "What?" And I said, "Can I get your autograph?" And he said. Yeah, there you go. Someone's, he goes, there, now go away. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Oh, after you, ra- after you dropped bars for him as well. Uh, like, Dr. Quig was like a pretty interesting guy. And cause I, I read a lot of stuff, you know, about the Cora Word. Dr. Quig, by the way, that is a rap name. Dr. Quig. Dr. Quig. Dr. Quig yeah, yeah, on the ones yeah, and twos. Yeah. It's uh, also what giant. my wife calls me sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> like a giant stethoscope instead of a giant clock. Yeah. You know? like, um, but the, uh, really, the thing that like stood out for me, because he was like, pretty like self-made he moved over with his family from england and then just worked in a foundry like casting metal when he was 10 years old and then he just worked <laughs> in a mine like as a 13 year old and then just fucked off to melbourne and came yeah. back as like a lawyer so came <laughs> back as a doctor apparently <laughs> yeah. it, was, it was the way you did it back then yeah. you know <laughs> what i mean you get in if you, oh mate you're nine come on get out there get a job yeah exactly <laughs> what you think you can't work in a foundry <laughs> <laughs> now they just up, <laughs> update the wikipedia page for the foundry and he, a, um, yeah he laid laid the ground for many a rap to come yeah, I, 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 I love the the only thing that i uh found on the the federation thing was that albury all the towns had their own they're all pushing for federation but then very quickly apparently um, they all got a little bit jelly Doctor, of each other. Doctor Quickly. <laughs> Doctor Quickly. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, basically, because someone in the paper for Cora were like, "We're going to have the Cora Convention. It's going to be here." And then someone was like, "Hey, maybe Cora could be the capital of Australia." Yes. And Albury cracked the shit, <laughs> and they got real snarky. And then Albury, the guy in the paper, one of the. Uh, you know, all the people were just like, oh, far from happy with the decision. Uh, and they started putting the page, you know, if you guys want to have your, you know, I can fervently promise that Cora, there can be no rival in any scheme that, you know, you guys want to have entertaining, guzzling politicians. So they're just snarky about the, the, com- the convention. And then they started teeing off on all the towns around. They're going, there's Berrigan, of course. Perhaps Berrigan has higher aims. It could be the capital. It has the stupendous advantage of being unapproachable by rail. So any enemy would be a further disadvantage. You mean 100 years before Andrew Barnett Albury released a diss track yeah. <laughs> every single yeah. other place. Albury's like, you think, you think you'd be the capital with a fucking uh, rail platform that small? Yeah, good luck, guys. <laughs> <laughs> the real deal. Yeah, this bad boy. So Get yeah. off and hop onto this one. <laughs> but that's how quick it fucking turns from like, we're all in this together, let's federate oh, together, mate. and then it's all jealousy mm. at the border. There are a couple of places around too that I believe claim to be the birthplace of federation, but mm. Coral, we were first. <laughs> <laughs> you, got first. you heard it here first. Mate. Does yeah. that mean the rivalry between Albury, Corowa, and like some of the other towns. Does it continue to this day? Is it all kind of faded in the in the time that's passed? Uh, I don't. I think Albury's just because everyone knows where Albury is. So you yeah. gotta you gotta mm. sort of give it up to Albury because whenever I like people say where'd you grow up, I say Corowa, and they go. They just sort of give me that look. I go, oh, it's just a bit west of Albury. Right. And they yeah, know where right. Albury is. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah. Albury, oh, well, Albury, Wodonga, the Twin Cities. Like, yeah, mate, it's not, nothing special. All the towns have got a big town, little town like that. Is yeah, is yeah. there a um, is there a local like rugby league comp or is it AFL? Because you mentioned AFL players came out of there. Yes, it's so it's more. It's funny because you're in New South Wales, but you wouldn't have a clue you're in New South Wales. Like all the TVs out of Melbourne, all the, like, so growing up, okay. like, and even to the point where, like, just even little New South Wales, like, you know, you call them, like, um, scallops, potato scallops. Mm-hmm. Yeah, down there it's potato cakes. Like you wouldn't, like Dis- my mum. Disgusting. Went, <laughs> <laughs> my mum went to order um, Cavanossi once at the deli and the, the lady, and this is in the in the deli at the supermarket in Corowa, my mum says, oh, can I get some Cabanossi, please? And the lady goes, oh, you must be from New South Wales. 
We call it Cabana down here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. It's Real good fun. to know that nothing's changed. <laughs> <laughs> oh, a tourist. <laughs> <laughs> this, is for lo- this Cabana's for locals only, guys. I did see um, going back through the paper, and because it, it is an AFL in town, right? I mean, yeah. in terms of the, at least... Um, we did, we did have a rugby league team, but they weren't... Um, they weren't an anywhere near as popular, and I don't I don't even know what comp they played in. I think they had to travel a lot further. Yeah, yeah, right. Where the, the AFL they used to when I was down, they played in the Ovens and Murray competition. Which yes, was I did see very, that. Very, uh, very strong in its day. Right. Yeah. Well, I I did see that. It seems like there's a bit of um, some quite uh, characters that uh, that played. There was a uh, young man, William King, who played for. It was called the Border. Border United, I think. Oh no! So he played for he played for Corowa, um, but he got caught. He basically punched the uh, referee uh, yep. flat out. Yep. He uh, pled guilty. Had it coming. Had yeah. it coming. <laughs> uh, apparently, the re- he heard said the referee called him. Uh, said I don't want to deal with those pack of. It says underline, but then later on it says bastards. So obviously that's what it meant. But then apparently the uh, he was fined a, bu- a couple of pounds, and the amount was immediately. Paid by the local townsmen, so that was like, <laughs> no, this guy he fucking punched the ref. Good on him, you know. I remember when I was at high school, there was a school game. A couple of guys from out, like they must have been in year eleven when I was in year seven or so, um, punched the living shit out of a guy that they were playing in a school game in Albury. To the point where he like there was a local news story and they interviewed the kid in hospital. Oh was, shit! Yeah. <laughs> Just but it, once again, had it coming. <laughs> <laughs> Call me, boss. Yeah. But then, uh, so it was for a while. Border United was the football club, and they sort of changed their name to Coro a couple of times. But um, because it was sort of Coro and the what was the uh, town on the other side of the? Liberal? So the town directly the other side is Waganya, but um, Waganya is like five hundred people. So that was um, Coral Rutherglen, which is just sort of a little bit further over the border. Mm, right, was right, the right. Coral Rutherglen Roos, Kangaroos. Right, but so this is nineteen oh four, thirteenth of April, and they had a general meeting with the Border United, and they, owing to the apathy shown last year and so far this year, have decided to disband the club. <laughs> <laughs> so mid year, they've just packed it up and they're like, fuck this shit, <laughs> come and last. <laughs> and then five days later, they had another meeting. They started to reform the club. Uh, and they're like, all right, we can... Not as apathetic as we thought. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, we've got nothing else to do, okay? And then the That's, next year... You know what's they, happened there? That's the ultimate equivalent of Dad being like, right, I'm turning this car around. Yeah, 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 yeah. You guys <laughs> no, can't no, no, we'll be good, kick. we'll be good. We won't be apathetic. <laughs> <laughs> and then like a year later, they disbanded again after another winless season. And they got oh, really? the band back together two years later and then they disbanded again. Right. They're just fucking everything. What they need they... is a good old-fashioned ref bashing just to yeah. bring everybody together, <laughs> yeah. raise a bit of money. What was um, that? Yeah, sorry. Well, how does... Because you mentioned Rather Glen and that, um, it seems like the sort of Coral or Rutherglen team has, has been around for a while because this is um, this is a bit of a long one. I'll do a bit of a sort of a bridged version. Uh, this is ghost gossip from a, oh, this is a story from um, in what? the 1800s in the paper in the Coral Free Press. Um, yeah. It would oh. have been yeah. So it starts. Um, uh, despite the efforts put forth to solve the Rutherglen mystery of the individual who's either playing at ghost or demented. Mm. Uh, still remains at large. He appeared last Sunday evening at Rutherglen Glen between the Railway Bridge and Douglas Star Hotel and put his arm around three young ladies who happen to be passing along the road. Wait, so the Coral of Free Press reckons this creepy pervert is a ghost? Yes. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Very convenient. <laughs> uh, does this guy, for him? Yeah, yeah, does this <laughs> guy work for the Coral of Free Press as well? It's a ghost with long arms. Too. Yeah, yeah. 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 Three. yeah, absolutely. No hover hand or anything. He's really <laughs> yeah. grabbing. The young ladies screamed and their cries attracted the attention of the Reverend E. Steggle, who was driving a buggy a few yards in advance. Uh, before Mr. No, Steggle. he was. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, was I was a few Steggle. yards. Yeah. <laughs> um, a bit Come on, a reverend. No one's, no yeah. reverend's done anything. That's Measure the, my arms. They're short. <laughs> that's the Scooby-Doo moment at the end. Where yeah. Yeah. Let's see who this ghost really is. The reverend. Um, but basically, there was a copycat then. So after that... Uh, um, the fact that someone had been playing ghosts at Rutherglen influenced another weak-minded creature who determined to do likewise. On Sunday night, a man who had made himself to appear about eight feet high and who wore a snowy white beard about two feet long visited Sugden's Woolwash near Corowa and uh, knocked on one of the doors. As soon as, it was o- as soon as it was opened, he glided away and knocked again. And so this guy's it's just a prankster. Basically. <laughs> like, yeah, this this guy did 24th of December, though. That guy <laughs> 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 a bit of Chris Kringle about it. Left him. some presents down the chimney. And uh, 
And then there's just it just goes on and on. It's apparently happened for a long time, and uh, they would just appear, and the town sort of got together to try to fight them. Because there is a lot, like it goes for a few pages, and there's a lot of this ghost harassing young ladies. Yeah. So I think this goes. But it's this also just, just any mysterious crime is the ghost now. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, like yeah, someone yeah. shat on my door. Out, there's a ghost. You know, like, like it's ghost. just the cops just like don't want to solve any crime. He's just like oh, another <laughs> fucking ghost. You know. But but is there, it's yeah. weird just to have that. Like, there's one uh, account of the ghost doing essentially a knock and run, and the guy comes out and he just leaps the fence. And it's like a ghost isn't going to be just going. Like, <laughs> <over> <laughs> <a fence. laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Lights caught right his it. pants on a nail. You know, <laughs> he can't go through. Uh, it. Was it growing up there? So you left there when you were you didn't yeah you know, like sixteen or something? Yeah, was sixteen. It? Yeah. So we, my old man was a teacher. So we moved down there uh, when I started. So when I first started primary school, we moved there in like, uh, I think it was 80, start, very start of 87. And then we left uh, at the end of year 10. So, so you had a pretty, pretty, pretty formative s- growing up there. Yeah, that was, yeah. that was probably the place where I'd say I grew up most. Mm-hmm. And were you sort of, you know, was it a town where it was so small that, you know, kids bored shitless get up to all sorts of mischief sort of thing? Or because your dad was a teacher, maybe it was... A, you know, pull you into gear a little bit, or no, 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 not at all. It was um, <laughs> you used to get out and put your ghost costumes on. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Mate, you should have seen the number of ghosts. <laughs> That's all Halloween was. It's just <laughs> <laughs> everyone gets together and gets to, you know. Yeah. No, we used to. It was one of those. It's a good town in that it was. It's not like tiny. Like we, I think there was five and a half thousand people mm-hmm. there, so it was big enough that there was stuff to do. But because um. It's on the river. There was, you know, had a decent golf club. You had, um, there was stuff to do. Like we yeah. just get on our bikes, ride wherever. And, um, you know, I was only thinking about that the other day. Would you like? I'd spend summer holidays, you know, in early high school or whatever. Get up, jump on my bike, go to a mate's place, play cricket for a bit, ride down the river, go for a swim, or go to the pool, go for a swim, mm. ride up the supermarket, torture the poor bloke that worked the tucker bag. We used, to have to do, we used to do this thing. Where we, <laughs> this one guy thought we'd, we st- we we weren't realised what happened. We he thought we were trying to steal, and because we weren't, we thought let's have fun with this. Um, so what we do is we go in right, and they used to have used to be able to buy individual cans of like soft drink. Yeah, um, the no frill soft drink for like t- twenty cents or whatever. But um, if you bought them refrigerated, they were like a dollar. So what we do is we take them off the shelf, go chuck them under the frozen peas for 20 minutes, and then we just have some time to kill in the supermarket. So we'd wander around. We'd have our backpacks on because we'd you know, have a towel or whatever in yeah. there. And so this guy was convinced we were stealing. And so we got cotton onto that. So we'd take stuff off the shelf right, and walk out of his view, put it in the bag, then walk and he'd see us. So he'd see us trying to put it in a bag, right? And then we'd walk out of his view, take it out and put it somewhere else in the thing. <laughs> and we'd just do 20 minutes of just, fi- he'd be fine. Us and then finally as we go to leave, we're like, right, boys, come here, open those bags. And they'd just be fucking empty. <laughs> <laughs> so much fun. Uh, oh, that's fucking so great. It's all the fun of shoplifting without the... Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Getting caught. Oh, I, lo- I love, um, like, th- is, it a, is it one of those towns that everyone sort of half knows each other. Like. Yeah, it's it was it was one of those towns where you, you if you didn't know someone, they knew some like the, mm. there's you know a few families that have lived there forever, yeah, and yeah. so people know each other, know cousins of so and so or whoever. Mm-hmm. It's one of those towns where you go, you know who this bloke is. And they go, no, no, I don't, don't know who you're talking about. Yeah, no, he's so and so's cousin. He went to, oh, okay, yeah, no, I know that. Per- like, you, yeah, know, yeah, yeah, sort yeah. of six degrees of separation yeah. right, style, right? And, and uh, uh, yeah, sorry. Oh, I was going to ask, did you guys ever shoplift anything? Oh, I mm. did when I was very young. Um, I put it was like a, I think it was a toy gun or something from Woolworth. Like Woolies had like a toy. I don't even know if they do anymore. But there used to be like a little part of the aisle that had a lot of toys, and I would have yeah, been like four do. or something, still right? Yeah. And um. Barney yeah, gets just them for his kids. I get them for me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> actually, actually nicked something from one the today. So yeah. <laughs> um, but I was there with my old man, and I wanted whatever it was, so I just put it down my pants and walked out. And um, as we're walking along, I pulled it out and was like, "Dad, look what I got!" And he's like, "What did you do? Like, did you steal that?" And I was like, "Yeah." And he goes. Fucking hide it. <laughs> <laughs> so I put it back down and I went straight. I went straight home, and I was so nervous that like the cops are going to take me away that I went and put. I had like a little box with all the toys in it, and I put it right at the bottom and just never touched it again. <laughs> <laughs> Very treasure. There you go. I just love yeah. Just in the mirror, like uh, on the security, stuffing toys down your pants. Go around the corner, take them all out. <laughs> get the fucking security guard. <laughs> just your pants, boys. What, Arrest this guy. What about you, Alex? Uh, I think I did something similar where it was like a Kinder surprise. 
surprise it had been busted open and the toy was like just the little the egg yeah, toy yeah, thing yeah, was yeah. there and i'm like fuck i just want that fucking toy i don't care so i took it and walked out and as i was walking out you know the fire extinguisher sprinkler things and mm. that i thought they were like some big like laser fucking security shield <laughs> yeah, yeah, thing nice. so i'm walking through and i'm on like sweating bullets <laughs> and it's like someone's going to detect the plastic in my pocket you know but then i got out i can't remember what the toy was but it was like i did the same i had so much guilt i did not enjoy it. yeah that's yeah. about as I, yeah. love, I, I love that in your head as a kid. You think that that you know they've put all that effort into the alarms, and yeah. that the that the person, the poor bastard, getting eight bucks an hour is just stacking groceries, <laughs> gives a shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. An eight missing. year old kid yeah. is going to steal. Yeah. So yeah. someone had already busted it open, like you know, of course. Yeah, I think I, I stole a packet of fruit tingles once from a family nice. owned convenience store when I was oh, like, wow, I think I was like when I was thirteen, and it's like everyone wants to be a badass in their own little yeah. ways. And of course, I chose the wimpiest way possible, <laughs> yeah. and then like the whole way home, I was like, but it's a family owned. But should I just go give it back? <laughs> <laughs> like, that family owned business was the man, and you were sticking it. To yeah, exactly. <laughs> but I used to have a mate who like I won't say his name, but he used to steal chronically because he's like never had enough money growing up, but he always had high ambitions, and he always used to say to me, that <laughs> well, that's good enough reason. Yeah, yeah. he always used to say to me that Look, he I want it. stuff, but I don't. Have it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that, do? that was exactly what he used to say. I was like, all right, what is it? And he was like, well, I just want that pair of pants, and he always used to tell me that he had a system, and you know how fucking pokey he's comes through always like I have the system and it's yeah, like yeah, what yeah. is the system it's like feed 50s till I have to go home and tell my wife I lost it all yeah. Yeah. that was essentially his system his system was like alright so what you do right, is like you go to a mile and you get like a bunch of clothes you want you go in the fitting rooms and uh, when you go in the fitting rooms to try them on, you just shove them down your pants and then you walk out. <laughs> no, I was like, oh, yeah. good, good job, Danny Ocean. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, just, now, he's the reason now you get the little thing that says you've got three items. when yeah, you yeah, yeah, yeah. That, Which that bastard's I've fault. never really understood that because it's three items and then like... Yeah, so what, then they've, you've got to count. I've never seen them count the fucking items as you're coming out, though. I can't see that. This might sense. also narrow down who it is, but it doesn't matter. But, like, he used to work with me at a big W, and so, like, sometimes, like, he'd just, like, so he's get like, in I've got, there. I'm a man on the inside. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but sometimes, like, he would just, like, steal from, like, a mire, and it would have one of those little tags on it. Oh. And uh, like so, it, like the alarm would hit, and because like it was a busy mall, most of the time the fucking fourteen year old working the door, like having experience working on the door, like at a big W, where they're like you got to check every bag for loss prevention. I every time you'd be like, this is so rude. Just like, yeah. can I can I check your bag, please? And people be like, no, and you'd be like, oh cool, have a good day. <laughs> <laughs> but like he'd, he he ran out, and like then he would just take the clothes with the tags in them and use big W's thing to remove them <laughs> because it's just a fucking magnet like yeah, that gets yeah. them off like they think it's like high technology but all you got to do is put it in this thing for one second and boom and he was just like yeah got a new my shit fuck you know awesome. I, I um yeah I, like those small towns though i feel like if you were caught shoplifting there you'd get dragged in front of the like it would be very guilt like is it that or you'd be dragged by your ear up to your parents house and like you know what you, i just caught your son doing. yeah you wouldn't get dragged necessarily to the cops because they weren't open all the time um, <laughs> so i remember because i worked at the supermarket uh like my second job i had there was a uh, Checkout chick and um, trolley boy at Safeway. And yeah, nice. uh, literally, it'd be like, so you'd be working on the checkout, and then Rhonda, our supervisor, would go, We're out of trolleys. And you'd have to go, and they'd just be all over the fucking main street, <laughs> <laughs> park wherever, and take the trolley and leave it. Yeah. And so you used to have to take, and then if anything went wrong, you'd have to run out. The police shop, the cop shop was over the back. And I remember I have to go over and knock on for something, nothing. And it was just like, Oh, it's unattended. And you'd press a button, and a phone would ring in Albury. <laughs> go, what do you need? This better be fucking uh, important. Yeah, they, look, they're back in Monday. Can, can I wait till that? Yeah, probably can uh, wait. Okay, go. good luck. Uh, <laughs> and so you're, you're you're riding your bike all around town. You're playing cricket, swimming in the river. I'm mm. sure. Um, good times. I'm sure you. Mm. There's a little bit of underage drinking, which brings us to your beverage yes. of choice. Uh, and you specified half warm VB. Obviously, these are cold because it's fucking hot today. <laughs> the bottle yeah. shop charges you more for cold ones. <laughs> yeah. There's only some yeah. frozen peas at the bottle shops. <laughs> <laughs> we, did, we did consider putting these in the microwave for you. To get <laughs> uh, I'm, uh, I'm sure you can remember the fucking warmness of them. So oh what's, uh, yeah, why, why the VB? Well, and why warm? Because I don't know if you remember the when you hit that age, when you first start underage drinking, you're not – like it's not like you're just going somewhere and um, – just drinking like everything's on the move when you're a kid mm, so yeah. we just have them in a backpack and they'd start right. out cold right. <laughs> right you just get six each 
right? And we go, fucking, we're going out, right? And we'd go down near the river, and then, uh, you know, a car would drive past that looked vaguely like it could be a cop, and so we'd run, <laughs> and then, you know, you'd stop. And so, like, on a hot summer night, uh, down there by the time you get to the fourth one or fifth one they yeah. are proper warm yeah. and <laughs> VB does not do well <laughs> it's not one of its strengths I remember yeah. going to a, um, a, one of, my brother was a couple of years older and he, one of his mates it might have even been the year above him had an 18th at, um, at a pub just across the river in Morgania called Fairies right and so we, we got to go along and we were in the pub and we looked around and there was fucking maybe three people over age in this pub like it was just that sort of thing but me and my my mate Scoob, um, we uh, <laughs> it's a fantastic oh, name. Scoob, yeah. Scoob, good good guy, got hit for the biggest six I've ever seen in school cricket. <laughs> <laughs> I fucking captain. He wasn't bowling well. I went to take him off. He goes, mate, just give me one more. Over. And I was like, all right. And then second ball just fucking massive. Scooby Doo. <laughs> <laughs> I was looking at him like, mate, I gave you one more over. <laughs> But anyway, there was all the older kids, right? We just tagged along with our brothers. So we were like, fucking, let's get out of here, you know? Let's go find some chicks at the caravan park or something. So um, we got to find them. Yeah, backpack. <laughs> and then the cops just did happen to be around. I think they'd driven through the... And we were convinced they were following us. So we finally finished. We had six each and we finished our six one and they were warm. And he just looked at me and gone... <laughs> thrown up and I went... Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I like where this is and after that good. we were drinking buddies because we threw up at the same time <laughs> good uh, good come on Barney, give me another over mate remember we're throwing up yeah. i love the idea of you two 15 years old like henry hill with the cops you know in the fucking good fellas with <laughs> yeah, the cocaine he's going for the oh, look, i swear yeah, yeah it says it like bush rangers you know what i mean like yeah. fucking you know the kelly gang i, I found a review for Coroa hotel um, oh, which one? Well, it's just called Corowa Hotel. I don't know. There must be is there. Mate, it's it's a, one of those towns that we when I was there we had like ten pubs and three registered clubs. Yeah, oh, right. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's a bit of a tourist destination in summer for like people come up and water ski, um, especially out of Melbourne or whatever. And mm, then mm. it's all built when um, it got, all got built up when pokies used to be illegal in um, Victoria. Oh. But they weren't here, and so we just get busloads of pensioners coming. Oh, so we had we had grim. the biggest bowling club in the southern hemisphere. Um, Shit! So like, you're Vegas of uh, you yeah. Know, like did, you, did you ever see the movie Cracker Jack? Yeah, yeah. Cracker Jack. Cracker Jack was filmed at the Coral Bowl. I love yeah, that. I, I love this that up. movie. Yeah, it was. Uh, yeah, so the the soulless bowling club that it had just had all pogies. That was oh, that's is that where the, I was from. Oh, yeah. that's okay. Coral. And then yeah. they legalized me in Victoria, and within a few years, uh, yeah, the club went bust. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, I'm not sure you, if right. you know this because, like, obviously with Cracker Jack, a bit of comedy history uh, mm. getting filmed there as the bowl club but at one point as well uh, Korowa was very much in the conversation to take the house from the castle and f like move it over there really where it was going to be this. where this it was going to be it was going to be moved to so there's a so, whiskey oh, sorry, after they filmed the castle to move the house so basically or? what happened with the castle house is like after filming like it fell into like a state of disrepair because like the person at first i think was like it was kind of a tourist attraction but it was costing them more in like upkeep than but, yeah, the people that would visit it basically. it's a tourist attraction that's just sort of a fibro house yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah <exactly. laughs> There's a lot to do there. so it's kind of falling apart so at one point so to, as a side note, like there is a very there's a whiskey distillery in Corwin that now, makes yes. their own whiskey, and they uh, they have a very cool story because they bought like essentially a derelict flour mill from mm. the council. That's for, heritage listed, yeah, by yeah, the way. for one dollar. Oh, wow. And yeah. they have now turned it into a multi-million dollar distillery that produces like award-winning whiskey and now does like, it makes its own chocolate. It's famous for a chocolate pizza, so I'm absolutely going there. <laughs> but it also does like whiskey taste. So now they've opened like the equivalent of like a cellar door for a distillery. But they were very much in 2017, they were in, there's there all these news articles about how they were in the conversation to buy the castle house, ship it over to Korowa. And what they were going to do was like, they were going to fix the roof because apparently the roof was just dead fucked and mm. it was ruining everything inside the house. And they were going to pack it full of... For some reason, someone in Korowa Cor had all this comedy memorabilia 
like a bunch of so they were going to turn it into a comedy museum that had the castle house in it and so for a bunch that's already right in the rap for the opening yeah, yeah. yeah here we go we'll get the rap going my name's Dal Kerrigan I'm here to say uh, don't you miss when that was rap people started yeah. to yeah. what they were here to say I, I'm sick of so rap is this now what's he here what, to say yeah. oh, come on just set it up at the start of an essay yeah. you break up you know the first paragraph Kendrick who are you and what are you here to say but so yeah apparently uh, like Horror at one point was going to have the Cracker Jack Bowls Club and this um, <laughs> thing on the side of the whiskey distillery because not only was it a flour mill, but it had like acreage around yeah. it. And they were going to make it into a comedy museum. And it sounded like a really cool idea. And then like everywhere, the articles were all dated 2017. They're like, it's happening. It's a thing. It's going to cost $40,000. But, but then I, could, I lost the lead on it because obviously it's not there. But it ended up going to another suburb called Beechworth. And Beechworth is, yeah, not too far away. Yeah, and oh. instead of, uh, and so this cunt that brought it, instead of like a comedy museum, it's going to be near the Cracker Jack Bowls Club, was like, I'll turn it into a trailer park attraction. So oh. he wanted to build a caravan That's park so... around it. And I was like, oh man, the greatest, probably the greatest Australian movie of all time. And now you've made it. That's fucking grim, dude. Yeah, like, let the no. guy, because apparently the guy in Corowa had like 30,000 like comedy related artifacts that he was going to put in there. Like, Books and yeah, like stuff written by guy? all these legends. Know, gotta I send him a headshot. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, listen, he, but he, he just writes back, yeah, I'll come back to you if I ever can find space on the wall yeah. for yeah. your stuff. <laughs> like. so I thought about it. Seriously, I grew up there. No, 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 yeah, yeah well, we'll see, man. Yeah, yeah. I, I like the idea Because I, like, um, I was like looking it up, being like, fuck, I could get Barno some speaking engagements <laughs> out of this one. <laughs> I, uh, I like awesome. the, the flower mill were like, you know, we'll give you a dollar for it. And then they're like, tell him he's dreaming, you know? And then Beach were like, two bucks. I'm like, that'll fucking do it. And then they just sadly like straight to the over. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, yeah, straight to the trailer park. Yeah, yeah. such but a then, Beechworth thing to do. Too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, Actually, I, Beechworth I, has a cracking bakery. If you're ever down that, does place. it? Beechworth yeah. Bakery is like it's renowned in the area. Two levels. It's also where they took Ned Kelly when he first uh, got uh, got locked up. They took him to Beechworth Jail, right, and fun. then uh, shipped him off to Melbourne to kill him. Oh, Jeez. okay. Yeah. Just a little. Didn't even let him get a sausage roll on the way out. <laughs> oh, <fine. laughs> no, meal. no, but you can get a Ned Kelly pie at um, at Beechworth Bakery that has an egg baked into the top. Right. So the top of it, and so and somehow, and I've only ever had it once. They managed to make the egg a bit runny. That sounds good. So you're biting into yeah. a pie with runny egg in the top. I don't know how they yeah. did it, but genius. Why, why, why are the egg and Ned Kelly? Is that a thing? No, it is. You know, it's not true eggs. <laughs> you know, Ned Kelly famously had an egg on his head. <laughs> yeah. You know his last words? Such as having egg on your face. <laughs> uh, there was a, I did find a, a bush ranger around the area. Uh, Daniel Morgan was a famous mm. bush oh, ranger. Mad Dog Morgan. Mad Dog Morgan. And, uh, you know, a lot of. Um, funny things that he did but so I won't go into detail he was a bit of a rough character but I do like the uh, description of the offender which they did uh, the police put out 35 years 5, 10 inches high long black hair all these very detailed things about it long beard with tinge long nose very sharp shallow complexion uh, brown spots freckles all this shit da 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 and then uh, right at the end, tumour about the size of a pigeon's egg on the back of his head. <laughs> 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 Maybe start with that one. Yeah, buried the lead there. <laughs> but, but imagine, though, you're walking down the street, you go, that guy got a tumour. It's about the size. Oh, it's, oh, it's more robin egg. Yeah. <laughs> like yeah, that, no yeah. way. No, the, like, fucking, the pie egg should be the mad yeah. dog. Yeah. 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 Should be the, dog. Yeah. the pie should be called the mad dog. <laughs> oh, I uh, believe uh, I've gone to his lookout. He, he, one of his hideouts. Oh, was in, oh really? Like right. a, off one of the roads there. We had to go, at, I think, on a school excursion mm, or something. Mm, they stopped mm. and climbed just a bunch of rocks. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> up high where you could get a good get a good view. Get yeah. a good view. Mm. I, uh, yeah, he did do a lot of, but he just basically ran around robbing everyone. He was just yeah running out of money constantly. Just I love those. Your mate. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. He yeah. wanted <laughs> shit. Yeah, he's got a system. <laughs> but that that would have been uh, like yeah, Cora would have been a bit of a hit. Like yeah, let's go on a school tour to see the local bush ranger look at, because the a proud part of history is the local dodgy criminal that was around at the time. You know. Yeah, there's um because Gold Rush era too is big down there. Like it was, it was one of the things we, we learned about in primary school. We did a, a week where we all had to 
um, our teacher did this exercise where we all were okay. You're a prospector, and it was a basic role playing game for a whole week. <laughs> yes. You did like so, yeah, and teacher I up, just wanted you to pan for gold so we could. <laughs> <get it. laughs> well, he did. He, t- he took us down. We that year, a year five excursion, we went down to uh, to Ballarat, went to Sovereign Hill, uh, panned for some gold, oh, uh, nice. stayed at a place near there that uh, reputedly had. The water slide with the uh, biggest uh, vertical drop in the southern hemisphere. Wow! Biggest <laughs> dam, <laughs> and it was cool. Uh, yeah, it stayed at a weird caravan park, and uh, but yeah, it was because it, yeah, the gold because the gold rush sort of around that area, sort of more south of Coral in Victoria, that that was part of where they'd bring the road, like they would have to run the gold up from the um, from the gold field. So there was quite a bit of bush ranger activity in that, that area. And there's a road between Wangaratta and almost to Rutherglen called Three Chains Road, which is just, it must be like 50, 60K, dead straight. And it was cleared three chains wide, which a chain is apparently about the length of a cricket pitch. Mm. And it was for the gold rush days so they could see if anyone was lying in wait to, oh, to right. rob the, right. the stagecoach yeah. ringing up the Because the, the cops at Albury are just like, we're not coming in for the weekend. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, the, the problem is it, with it is, is it's this dead straight road and at the end there's like a 90 degree bend to join the highway. And so if you're not paying attention, you can just... <laughs> right, <laughs> off, right off the end of that. <laughs> right off the end of the highest So you've got to gradually bend. Yeah, yeah. Just, yeah we're going to go 90 degrees uh, here. Just back to the Coral Hotel. I do have one funny review from them. Oh, here we go. John, three stars. Very good atmosphere, except staying alive was playing on repeat the whole night. <laughs> 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 like, I feel like that might not be the best atmosphere, John. But uh, <laughs> yeah. but yeah, but that's Coral Hotel. There's a lot of uh, local, yeah. Like it's just like a little pub yeah. strip. Do there, you have right? the thing? Because we had uh, Bonnie Tangy on, and I can't for the life of me think of a town. But it was Newstead, a very, Newstead, a small town in Victoria. And she sort of said that if you if you drink at this pub, you, you don't associate with the people that drink at this pub. Do they have any of that? Like yeah, there was a bit of that. Yeah, like you you had your local, even though they were maybe a block apart on yeah. the main road. Hmm. But um, yeah, people had their pub they drank at generally, and then you know there were. I don't think there was no no. I don't know if there was no mixing at all, but um, yeah. but it was yeah definitely people had their locals. Like we used to use the bottle. We used to go to, the, to buy grog underage the bottle at the Globe, which was down um, down the bottom end of Sanger Street, which is the main street. Sanger Street. Sanger Street. <laughs> That's and a famous I remember going in first time my brother just got his peas and I was uh, I was in the car with him. We were going out, we were camping out at the place called the Wagon Wheel, just out of town with a bunch of his mates and we needed to go get a slab of beer. So we pull into the drive through and like first off we'd forgotten to take the pea plates off the car. But then we noticed <laughs> our under 14s. Just rocking up with L's on. <laughs> yeah. Well, our under 14s cricket coach is working the bottle over, working the drive through, <laughs> who'd, who'd literally coached me 12 months before. Like, cricket season's just starting. Like, this is the first year I'm out of under 14s. So yeah. He just looks at me and goes, the Barnett boys, what can I do for you? <laughs> <laughs> Didn't even pretend not to recognise. <laughs> You're well, getting pissed, are you, boys? All right. Yeah, let me How's under 15s going, mate? You doing okay? <laughs> well, it was funny, too, because that bottle, I still have a stubby holder at home. And from like back in the, the 90s, one of the things, you know, like um, all the features of the, you know, accommodation, you know, shared bathrooms, all this sort of stuff. And then at the bottom is um, uh, large drive through bottle shop, free home delivery. <laughs> which is another thing if you're at a party you could do is you'd um you'd ring up the bottle and say can you send over some grog and they go you're not underage are you no no no, we're not underage uh and then so they get the taxi driver to come down and all you had to do was pay the fare on top of the right. grog oh, on top of that shit. and by the time they got there the taxi driver didn't want to argue with you about whether you're underage or not. They just go, oh, who gives a shit? Give, yeah. us, give us 10 bucks for the fare and here's your beer. I'm assuming the taxi driver didn't have to do an RSA or anything. You yeah, know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here's your under-14s <laughs> footy coach. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> He's just like, Andrew, I heard you fucking let your mate on. But I heard you let Scoob on for one extra over. And he he <laughs> scooped it. <laughs> well, not to encourage Drew, who likes to repeat stories, but um, <laughs> we, the, the one the one story I think you have told but was about the granddad giving you the fucking note. What we're talking about? Yeah, yeah. My, my granddad used to give all, like, me, my brother, my two cousins, and we would have been seven or eight, and we got a handwritten note to go – to the shops that just said, I give permission for my grandsons to buy me cigarettes, signed Stan Foley. And the, the bloke at Nick's 
We'll just, yeah, that checks out and just give us cigarettes. <laughs> yeah, I, <laughs> welcome back. So my first ever job, I used to work three hours on a Sunday morning at the hospital shop, which wasn't, it was the, like, the corner store across the road from the hospital. <laughs> and that you'd get kids come in and go, oh, dad sent me down to buy <laughs> smokes and this, and you just... And yeah. I, like the guy that owned it, he goes, well, fucking give it to me. <laughs> <laughs> Can't you fucking uh, read? His dad sent it here. <laughs> yeah, that's so good. Yeah. Oh, I just love that. Just yeah, go to the bank. My dad said I can take out 400 bucks. <laughs> <laughs> you almost hope that that like hasn't changed with the country oh, towns. Where it's like, so. I'd, yeah. I'd, like, I'd love to rock in just in with like, a kid one day and be like, all right, let's test this. Like a seven-year-old being like, my dad wants a pack of JPS golds. And like the 14-year-old's all frazzled and the owner's just like, just fucking give him cunt. It's his dad. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, but he just you don't want him to get in trouble, do you? Yeah. 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 He's going to catch hell if he comes home with no diaries. <laughs> uh, was there any local characters, small town, you know, in a way, was there any like real crazy local? You like mentioned a guy crazy. called John Longmire, I believe. And John Longmire was like a bit of the town icon. When I was a kid, like he was, so he was playing in, in the AFL. He's currently the coach of the Sydney Swans mm. in the oh, AFL. Right. Um, cool. Horse, old horse Longmire. <laughs> uh, he, um, he, yeah, so he was, he was like sort of the icon of the town when mm. I was, and his youngest sister. And if I ever meet him, because we've done some AFL stuff through the show, and I always want to meet him and just say, you know, your, your sister was my babysitter as a kid. Because, yeah, Not she right. was in my dad's four unit maths class one year and she used to like dad mum and dad would go out and get pissed midweek and uh yeah shelly would come around and just do my <laughs> work and us. but um yeah so he was i remember meeting him actually when i was working in the, the um the hospital shop first time i met him and i fucking couldn't believe how giant a man he was he was uh-huh. there and it was it was that kind of thing where i was like oh my god john longmire is in it. Um, I went home and I was like, John Longmire came in the shop today. And my parents already knew that. Yeah, yeah, he's, uh, his grandmother's sick. He's in town to, to visit her at the hospital. But that was the sort of stuff people just knew. Yeah. Oh, he's, he's a good kid, isn't he? <laughs> <laughs> his grandmother. Oh, yeah, that's um, great. There was, yeah, there was some weird, weird characters. But it was like stuff like that. There was a yeah. lot of... A lot of lo- local legends, but in a good way. Sort there of was thing. a guy, there was a bunch of brothers. One of them I went to school, was in my year at school, ended up playing in the AFL. But the Hulahan boys all... Um, great name. Yeah, the, the, so it was uh, Damien was the first one to go. He got drafted, went to Collingwood, and then got sent back. And there were all rumours that he tried to hit on one of the senior players' misses at a team function. <laughs> <laughs> and all of a sudden, he was just back in. Co- but his nickname was Hose. They used to call him Hose. And like, so you'd see, like, so because people would go down and cheer on and that. So you'd, um, like, you know, have elder citizens like old ladies or whatever you know so like go on hose <laughs> <laughs> like oh, why they call him hose <laughs> 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 yeah, it's like even the kids been like dad why do they call him hose and yeah, yeah, well, like, yeah. should see him shower <laughs> <laughs> give it to him hose get hose on out get hose out of here whip well, hose out <laughs> one, of, one of his younger brothers was his claim of fame was um, he played in the AFL as well but literally started as an apprentice jockey and over one summer grew like four inches and put on 30 kilos Fuck. and then just got drafted into the AFL. Like, he's like what six a one. Events. Yeah. Rocks. I did um I found one funny character, just the name kills me, but this is back in the twenties or something. But it started off, I just saw this. Okay, uh, how old do you guys think I am? <laughs> I was just, do you know this guy? Uh, Alfred Deacon. No, uh, this guy, uh, but it was in a the article is uh, another unprofitable visitor. So they used to have in the, you know, back in the day that someone had come through town and run up a big bill at the pub and then leave. And then they'd do a report about it in the paper. Right. That's so I know. So it'd be towards the end They're of like, last my week. My dad gave me a note for it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But it says, uh, uh, there's a party uh, last week called, and it just says in, in vertical commas, Barry, <laughs> who visited the town in the early part of November last in, he left with some rather unpleasant results to some of the local business people. The individual referred to put up, uh, he basically got put up in a hotel and he bang- began to run up a massive bill and his taste for good tonics was particularly marked. Um, but he basically went on that good he said, tonics. I know, he said some way he went about that he had a check or draft on him for 700 pounds. So he's going on about how he has this massive check. Uh, but then he also... Oh, yeah, that bloke's just talking. About, Mate, I'm so rich. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But it also Bottle says... Service, this is how Another dumb tonic they, on me, please. <laughs> this is how dumb the guy is. 
Uh, everyone is. Uh, though so comfortably fixed as having this amount, apparently he was not above borrowing a loan of one pound from the hotel keeper. <laughs> so he asks, <laughs> can, you borrow, can I borrow a pound from you? The 700, it's, uh, it's in the it's ba- bottom up. of my suitcase. It's, it's up in really bonds hard. right now. So, I need one seven hundredth of this, please. <laughs> so um, ba- basically it says, however, on Monday, uh, I love this word, he said, um, easily satisfied. Da, da, da. However, um, he took... French leave from the place, which I don't know that was a thing, but to take French leave. Is that like doing a runner? It's like That's, doing a runner, yeah. Well, I, I'm bringing that back. That's or like old uh, school racism. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Those bloody French. <laughs> <laughs> but basically... Sorry to take French leave, but I forgot my credit card. Today. <laughs> but then he went uh, He went across to Warunga, R- R- sorry, Wagunya. 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 Uh, and then he basically ran amok there on the hotel keepers. But this is where the character comes in. Fairies Bistro, he, probably. Well, <laughs> it, he, up. even even better name. Then he took a upon the quarters at the Angry Ant Pie Shop and ran up a massive <laughs> bill. And then the proprietor of the Angry Ant Pie Shop, so it's going about Angry Ant Pie Shop. And, he, you know, this guy went, and I was like, "That's a f- what the fuck is Angry Ant? I found out the owner of Angry Ant is Angry Ant. That's what he calls himself. And he had written into the newspaper this huge scandal about a swimming carnival. <laughs> so he writes Fucking in. Fucking out, this is involved. Yeah. yeah. So he writes in basically, and I'll summarize it is that uh, Angry Ant writes in saying that uh, there was a swimming carnival and that. Can I uh, just, can I guess? Yeah. Angry's not happy. <laughs> <laughs> He's furious. Uh, <laughs> but basically, he was a spectator across the river at the 40 yard race. It was won by a little boy called R. Baker, but although the management of some part, they decided to race the race again, and the w- boy Baker won it a second time for some other trivial complaint and then they asked him and he had to run it another time this is for a five pound prize which they did not give to him and I would like to ask the public if they call this whole thing a clean sport and I'd love the promoters to explain why they would not give signed by Angry Ant aka C Baker so it's his bloke's dad right so <laughs> oh man then People Nobody are, likes the Baker family. But people start writing back in that Spectator writes oh, in. Oh, it explains why he owns a pie shop, though. He's a baker. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, I gotta, oh, I gotta, yeah, I'm not going to own an ant farm, right? But so, so his son, from the sounds of it, legitimately won like a race three times. Three times. Yeah. But then they explained that uh, basically uh, what happened. He was happen- 34 years old. What happened was <laughs> Spectator, Spectator writes in and says, there was a handicap which was not adhered to, and that's why it happened. Also, I see you admit you watched it from the other side of the river. Well, from Victoria, you didn't. You obviously then didn't have to pay the fare to watch the the race. So you're cheating the fucking Bloody. spectators sticking it into him. And then um, <laughs> basically uh, they come out and they explain it. But I love this one. This is it goes back and forth about five times. But this is the best start. This is from Angry Ant again. To the editor. <laughs> Sir, the secretary of the late swimming carnival seems impregnable to the sting of the angry ant. <laughs> 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 By not giving the desired information. Why his boy? Why this boy has not won the thing? And it just goes on. And then he says, also a letter appeared in this day by Spectator who is not explaining why. Again, he states the little boy was asked to um, not... So Spectator said he didn't only had to race twice, not three times. And he says, I was there, I know. So Spectator's knowledge could be placed in a nutshell. But he must have more in his little back pole than he shows in his front room, which I think implies he must have spectator must be like the organizer and not a spectator. Yeah, right. And oh. then, and then he, uh, this is great. So he says, "Why not? Um, why not pay the little boy who won?" Oh, I might, might rather. I his would. Son yeah, well. yeah. But he says, "I might." rather pay than have my own name besmirched on such a trivial affair, I would pay it from my own pocket. Although I sell pies in the street for a living. <laughs> <laughs> and also Angry Ant is clearly very comfortable with referring to himself in the third person. He so every so he's, got, he's fucking uh, like so tiring of all the other residents being like fucking Angry Ant will sting you and they're like, just give me a pie. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So this, is a, this is interesting because a lot of people don't realise that the Coral newspaper invented the comment sections on YouTube. Yeah. <laughs> 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 At a certain point, Spectator says Angry Ant is worse than Hitler. <laughs> <laughs> Currently a private in the German army, but will be bad news. For <laughs> 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 he, yeah, he's, uh, uh, but yeah, yeah, Angry Man Ant. really into painting. <laughs> <laughs> a, li- a little ant avatar there yeah. as well. But uh, so it, go- it is more of this, but it basically goes back and forth. And also Angry Ant also says, also I wish to inform Brunton Fulm- Fulman, who signs himself as spectator. So he's just doxing this guy as spectator. <laughs> yes. But 
This is just compl- again. So I was googling so angry. This ants. has had to happen over the course of like three weeks. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, oh, yeah. probably honey, longer. Get the typewriter. I'm in an argument. <laughs> the, the, the swimming ants angry. The, I'm sw- angry. the swimming carnival do reply themselves. The just like ants. Stop. So what they did, what happened was that there was supposed to be a handicap. She's like, I should have please call me angry ant. ant. She's like, what happened married. to the loving ant that I married? <laughs> I married gentle (laughs) ant. I'm angry. He's like George from Seinfeld. I'm angry. Um, So the swimming carnival do reply and the swimming carnival basically, not reply, but they sort of straighten it out where they said the boys ran a race. It was supposed to be a handicap. The bigger boys won. They realised that they didn't imply the handicap. So they ran a race again. There was a huge mistake, however, when they accidentally gave the handicap to the bigger boys. So then they, so <laughs> then, <laughs> so then the bigger boys had an eight second head start. <laughs> and the little boys had stood there. I think we're talking about more than one handicap. <laughs> <laughs> Seven seconds for the little chaps had to wait. So the little kids. The little sm- chaps. After that, already seven got smashed. Seconds, the little chaps had to wait. Uh, you know how they beat you when you all started at the same time. <laughs> Watch how much they kick your ass by now. And then basically they they said, "We." How do you stuff up a handicap? Oh, no, no, no. Ant is getting upset. Uh, Nobody it's... noticed. Like, look at that seven foot tall man. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> hey guys, I know we had a handicap idea, but that made it way worse. Uh, <laughs> Uh, but then, uh, just to finish off on Angry Ant, I just saw another article completely separate but involving Angry Ant where it just says, um, an exciting contest, a great running contest. So you like, guys love contests, right? But this involves Angry Ant. It took place one day this week with two local identities. The contestants were Angry Ant, and it says, well known in hot pie circles. <laughs> <laughs> and a popular butcher boy. Oh, uh, the conditions were, I don't know how they come up with this. This is great. The conditions were that the meat pur- purveyor had to run 100 yards while Angry Ann had to run 50 yards with a boy or man 10 stone weight on his back. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? Hey, yeah. hey, hey, this is pre-television. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is definitely a show on Channel 7, you know, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. hosted by Grant oh, Denya or something. But the, way you, the wager was 10 shillings a side and 10 t- interest was taken and the excitement ran high. Meat! Beat Ant by about four yards. <laughs> so the oh, butcher beat Ant. As a result, another challenge has been thrown down. One person has challenged another to race a mile, one person to run in the distance, while the second person has to do it on horseback. However, the second person has to drink a cup of hot tea before he starts. <laughs> so you so yeah, famously make it worse at horse racing. No, like, I think they mean go and you've got to skull yeah. the tea while the, right. the foot runner oh, so far think, is the favourite. You don't favorites. think it's first cup of tea in the morning? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, no, you're not going to take a shit. <laughs> then get on the horse. <laughs> Uh, the uh, foot runner so far is a favourite. So wow. angry yeah. Ant. Yeah. I love the idea of someone like eating a dodgy pie of angry, you know, angry ant and yeah. just getting diarrhea land and going, being stung by the angry ant again. <laughs> <laughs> stung. Angry Ant was born too young. He seems like destined oh. for Reddit at some point. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He's a great Can guy. Can we just lament the death of great pros too? The how good yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's, it's so like good. Calling a butcher a meat purveyor. Yeah. <laughs> like they never call the person the same thing twice. Yeah, it's that's amazing. Great. One yeah. of the things that crops up over and over again, because we find uh, a lot of old news paper articles from like this archive and whenever someone does anything extremely scummy like murders someone assaults someone they're referred to as a larrikin yes. <laughs> it's just like yeah. it's just like oh the, the expressions changed <laughs> Mate, you, yeah, could, yeah, you yeah, couldn't yeah. believe what this scallywag did when <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I'm becoming yeah. of us yeah. oh yeah. man this scamp glassed a guy to death <laughs> yeah he's incorrigible well it seems like the whole uh you know, taking French leave, if you will, is a bit of a Korowa tradition. Oh, here we go. Because this guy, this is titled Korowa Mystery, and um, just a short article from the paper. So Wednesday, a middle-aged man named Williams, who had been staying at the Star Hotel for a couple of weeks, Star's has been still there. Is I it? Believe. Oh, oh wow. It is. Apparently, it's haunted as well. It's um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, it's a couple of is it or is there a prankster? <laughs> <laughs> Later I know night, you yeah, wanted to put a theme park there. <laughs> we might, he could clear the stuff. We might, angry ants <laughs> in a bed shed. We might find out who's haunting it because he's been missing since Saturday last. Ooh. It appears that he came from the Coal Can District, having been. Been employed yep. there for some okay. time as a gardener. 
It stated that while in Korowa, he'd been drinking and apparently run short of money as he informed the landlord he would telegraph to a friend at Kalkan for some. The money was not, however, forthcoming, and this appeared to worry him considerably. It was his custom to have his nip early in the morning, and he was in the habit of going to the bar in his pyjamas and an overcoat. <laughs> As you do. <laughs> On Saturday this morning... This guy sounds like he rules. Yeah. And he sounds like the dude, you know, from yeah. uh, Big mm. Lebowski. On Saturday morning, he was so dressed, and uh, no notice was taken of him, but during the day, his room was visited, and his clothes were found to be strewn about the floor. During Monday, his overcoat was found on the bank of the river, which is in such a swollen state that nothing can be done in the way of dragging. A search of his clothes failed to bring light to anything respecting the man. He was said to be well, uh, uh, well educated. It is feared that the disappointment at not receiving the money caused him to jump into the river. <laughs> <laughs> this guy was like, I'm oh, good for it, I swear. <laughs> uh, uh, I, I, one other funny thing I found, which is a strange occurrence at Coral, which just, I, it's more just a funny inside of technology back then but i think what happened was they very early on you know obviously electricity was was in uh you know came to town uh but basically they changed the coupling at albury the the current that they were getting electricity from after midnight on saturday they switched it over for some reason they accidentally switched it over the wrong way so all the motors in town ran in reverse <laughs> so, oh, <no. laughs> so like the like, the butchery had meat thrown everywhere all over the cutting room. Yeah. So every machine in Wait, town yeah. started going backwards. It's like the original like Y2K. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And then they just like, it's just a small little article like, oh, that was pretty much what happened yesterday. The oh, whole no. town went in went yeah. in reverse. Wonder what Angry Ant thought. <laughs> <laughs> spy shop. Yeah. Angry Ant took it in stride. <laughs> <laughs> he was like challenging local meat purveyors to a bigger rate. <laughs> um, That's you outstanding. You mentioned... You Sorry. mentioned, Bono, uh, mm. about a nuclear waste incinerator that was put in. Uh, yeah, there. no, it wasn't put in. Ah, oh, was uh, not so put in. So <laughs> the big controversy, uh, my first uh, first go at activism uh, <laughs> <laughs> as a young bloke. We, we, yeah, there was, I'm trying to remember the year because I must have been in primary school and um, – they, there was a plan. The government wanted to put a nuclear waste incinerator. They were trying to find somewhere to put it. Not that we produce a lot of nuclear waste in this country, so I'm not <laughs> sure why they decided they needed it. But they were. I think they were going to import nuclear waste, and it, so this was going to basically get rid of it. Um, and they, they, coral was put as the. Oh, this is the perfect location. And the council had said, Yeah, why not? And it, the <laughs> town just went nuts. Right? The town just, were like no. hundred years ago, we were. Well, maybe the capital. Yeah. Now, hundred years later, I mean, we do not want your nuclear waste. <laughs> yeah. This council, like something, they're selling things for a dollar. There yeah. you go, bring in the nuclear waste. <laughs> like, yeah. No, no, yeah, it's not ideal. But they, so then, um, yeah, the townspeople. I remember the big protest down the uh, down the street. First protest they ever um, attended, chanting, "Not now, not later." We said, "No incinerator." Oh, <laughs> that's yeah. an yeah. early it's rap. Good, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like you and your brother, right? That one. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's funny you mentioned my brother because we had we entered this. Um, um, one of the local shops had a competition for the kids to design a poster to protest the uh, the nu- nuclear waste incinerator in oh, town, yeah. and my brother won it with a poster, <laughs> um, which he had. It, I'm trying to remember what year because the Ninja Turtles were big. Because on on it, it basically was a nuclear reactor thing, and the Ninja Turtles in front of it, and he's just written, <laughs> "Maybe the Ninja Turtles can save us." So, <laughs> Um, and that one? won? Yeah. That for one. They'll save us after they come out of the sewers from the nuclear <laughs> well, waste. Exactly. <laughs> they're, they're the toxic, <laughs> the toxic waste yeah. is their thing. Um, and they, but he, he, so he won. I think he only drew because he was just good at drawing Ninja Turtles. That was what he <laughs> knew how to draw. Just them. entering every competition. Yeah. <laughs> but the prize he won was a. This is it's bizarre. He won a um, a grand piano shaped uh, telephone. <laughs> like a telephone in the shape of a grand piano. So you know like the grand piano yeah, the, the flap totally sticks up useful. so that's your receiving. Yeah, yeah, for a young, young fellow who's still at home, right? You know? Yeah, like, yeah, it's like, who just loves Leonardo and the gang. It's a landline, of course. So, so, and oh. mum and dad are like, No, we're not putting that up. So my brother just had in his room and the keys would make the ding, 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 like the different sounds. Oh, the different man, numbers. Oh, I love so this you'd, phone. You'd, yeah, so along the keyboard <laughs> there would be the numbers and you dial them by basically play a little tune to dial someone and then pick it up. That's <laughs> like, here's 10 bucks, go to the reject shop, get the prize. Like, it's a, it, the ceremony's in an hour and a half. Like, well, the reject shop wasn't open yet then. When we got the reject shop, there was a uh, there was a line. 
<laughs> I line up the day. Fuck <laughs> 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 yeah. Because yeah. oh, we had no, there was no, when I was growing up, there was no, we had no chain fast food or anything. Right. Right? So we had, um, now I think there's a McDonald's, but we had the pizza shop at the bottom was Ricky D's. We had Gardener Roses Cafe, which was one of the fish and chip shops. And there was, I forget the name of the other. Fish and chip shop. Um, the Sadakas, who I went to school with. Good. Uh, Ricky D's sounds like reject shop McDonald's, by the oh, way. Yeah. <laughs> Ricky D's was awesome pizza. Oh, okay, right. Right. Ricky D's was good. They, the thing they did, which was just absolutely brilliant for a young um, young underage drinker, was you go in there late at night and they do hot dogs. But what they do is you get the hot dog and you, they'd put any pizza topping on it for you as well Oof. and then put it in the oven and melt it. So oh, you go, yeah, yeah, you know, I'll have this, that, that, you know, a bit of cheese, yeah, boom, melt, and oh. they come out. And I remember one night being drunk, um, underage, and just blowing up because the ATM wouldn't do $10. <laughs> $20. And I was like, I don't want to get out a whole $20. Mum and dad will know I've been into my bank account to buy hot dogs. <laughs> $10. <laughs> Ricky D's. Oh mate, it was so good. Oh, it's such good food down oh, at Ricky that's D's. Excellent. Yeah. So you had a line up for the reject shop though. That's great. Yeah. That yeah. was amazing. Line and you guys know did you know what reject shop was? That it was a discount chain or was it it was it like big W to you? Do you know what no, I mean? No, no, no. It was it was, it was we weren't idiots. No. <laughs> like, we're like, oh, in lieu oh, of when we get CV, we're going to learn a bit. Like, we, in lieu of a fucking Big W, Reject Shop becomes a fucking... Do you know what I mean? It's like yeah. if, you had a, if you don't have a Maya, then Big W is the fucking... But it, it was yeah. at that time, so. we didn't really have a lot of... Like it was a chain store. You didn't right. have it was That was all it was. There. We had was like... The design, the yeah, you had... So the two supermarkets was Safeway, um, which was... Great when I first and then they upgraded that later on and then but the other one was Tucker Bag which was across the other side of the road Beautiful. which are now I think is an IGA. Did you guys do you know Tucker Bag? I no, don't, what, IGAs I think all had their they were all their own shops and then they all merged yeah, into like, one yeah. thing. Right? Franklin's is so, now yeah, all IGA. Yeah. I so think they, when I grew up in, uh, I think the, there was a place in West Pennant Hills that became an IGA that was just like Sunit and Sundar's like general right. store because mm. it was just owned by. T- India there was family. a Franklin's, I think it was Franklin's in Queen Bien, and I loved it because they had the trolleys and then they had mini trolleys. So my yeah. nan, I'd go with my nan and I have my little mini trolley next to it. I just had really, the greatest time. Really hurt people's shins. <laughs> <laughs> but um, we, yeah, so Tucker Bag used to have the ads and they'd have their, their, um, their mascot was a paper bag <laughs> who talked on the so ads. Love it. Oh, specials this week on Tucker Bag. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, but yeah, other than that, like, rules. we didn't have any, there was no change. Like, yeah, so yeah, yeah, it was yeah. a big thing. Like if we went into Albury for the day, it was a big deal for us because we were like, good, let's, good, let's go get McDonald's. Yeah, like it was, yeah, right. I remember birthday parties because we didn't have movies or anything. There was no cinema. Um, occasionally the, they'd come and set up in the Memorial Hall and you'd get to watch it. I remember watching a double feature of uh, Rocky Five and Quigley Down Under. <laughs> and literally we're going to the movies. Where are we going? Oh, down at the Memorial Hall. And you go in and they'd just literally fold out seats and a projector on stands <laughs> in the back. And, but it was outstanding. Yeah, it was good. Two it. movies for five bucks. I can't, don't know. Can't go can't past that. that. Brilliant. Yeah, yeah. I don't even know what the, f- what the fuck is the second movie. What's Qu- Quigley Down Under? Quigley Down Under. Quigley was uh, Tom Selleck. Oh, uh, like a sort of this cowboy, cowboy type character, and, and he went down under. Yeah, went down under. Was it, it filmed in Australia? Australia? Yeah, filmed in Australia. Yeah. It came and uh, it's a good film, actually. Check it out. It's uh, I, is it an action movie. No, it's like, sort of like a weird down under western. Okay, I saw the Oz, Oz, Oz good mustache. I mean, his mustache. Right? Like, is uh, what was it? The Mad Dog Morgan is the mo- uh, Aussie Bush Ranger film with uh, Dennis Hopper in it, which I didn't know until I was mm. looking at Dan Morgan, but. Australian Bush Ranger films. I think there was a bunch in the seventies where they just made a bunch of American, yeah, um, like produced Aussie. Mick Jagger came over and played. Yeah, Ned Mick Jagger. Yeah, yeah, played yeah, Ned yeah, Kelly. Yeah, yeah. There's, yeah. there's some weird. There was I like some the ones I've never watched them, but like I always like that the. the the Comedy Central used to play them really late. The Alvin Purple movies, oh, which yeah. were like a lot of Australia's nudity. version of Porky's, where yeah. it's just like a guy with like a bowl cup being like, "Fucking all right, yeah, it's like, <laughs> look at the jubblies on it." Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think at the time that was still pretty hack and corny, right? Like they were like pretty low brow oh, then. I don't know. Right? Wasn't no. Prisoner considered pretty revolutionary because it had like women getting it on with each other and like <laughs> <laughs> and they were like fucking we're woke. Jamie heard about that as a 15 year old. I'm watching this show. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Where's da- Dad? Come watch the show. <laughs> uh, all right. Were we wait, wait, wait. Did uh, I forgot because we breezed past it. Did you have anything more on the nuclear incinerator or, or was it about your brother with the Ninja Turtles? 
Was that not enough? Oh, no, no. Because I, <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I thought you felt said... Like it was a pretty good story. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because Have you ever thought... seen a grand piano? <laughs> no, <laughs> I thought you said sidebar <laughs> and mentioned... <laughs> play it, I thought you said sidebar and mentioned like that. No, no, no. no, no. That's no, the no man. I, but, we did well, get rid of it. Well, that's a perfectly I... wonderful man story. Yeah. <laughs> but hey, activism, what? Yeah. Nice. yeah. My, yeah. my first dose of activism. Look at that. Beautiful. I love that. There was no one in town for it though, right? Like it wasn't like... The one idiot council member who's going to get Kickback I think there was, yeah, I think there was some, it was going to be some sort of money that was going into the council coffers, and they went, well, that might solve a problem. But, um, yeah, it didn't. It was weird town because like, we didn't get, like, even the water out of the tap just came out of the, it wasn't like there was no water treatment filter. So if you pissed in the river, yeah. Okay. Oh, it depends how far upstream. Um, <laughs> but, but we, yeah, so we used to like get visitors and stuff. So dad put a water tank in. So we'd drink tank water like for our tap water, for like drinking water, but you'd shower or whatever in the water. town water. <laughs> mm. And the town water, like, so you just wouldn't have like all your white clothes and that with your washing. You'd just turn this weird grey. <laughs> I remember my, 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 my grandmother visited once when we were real little and she, um, she'd come down from Sydney and she's, goes in the bath was run and she says to my mum jeez the kids were dirty tonight and pulled the plug out <laughs> and mum goes they haven't got in yet <laughs> <laughs> and a lot of the council's like there's someone yeah, who's like know, hey th- these, these guys will have a nuclear reactor facility here they couldn't give a flying fuck about it. <laughs> oh my god I mean we, we normally ask a couple of questions at the end uh, we start with one question which is I mean if you were, if someone's going to Cora, you know, listening yep. to this or us, what would you recommend for a, for a day out in terms of things now? I suppose uh, if if you're not sure if they're still there, uh, but basically morning sort of, you know, for breakfast and then lunch and something to do at night. Okay, um, yeah, I haven't been I haven't been back there in a while because all my family are now in Newcastle. So I'd probably say get out to the golf club. For, mm-hmm. a, for a hit, it was beautiful. One of the great the series of clubs called the Great Clubs on the Murray. Mm. Um, real good uh, golf courses. So it's a nice twenty seven hole golf course. If you can avoid playing the front nine, I would because it's super fucking long. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, it's, <laughs> it's it was a, a nightmare as a kid. There, you know, it was yeah. a nightmare as a kid. They'd, the last that a par five, I think it was the eighth, which was like and go about. Like, 400 meters and then dog leg like oh. it's like almost a 600 meter <laughs> which, when you when you when you're 11 yeah. is, that's oh, a lot and of you're dragging you know your buggy yeah, right yeah, you're yeah. not even you've got your car. parents there being like fuck yeah. <laughs> you pull out a card it's like what par 19 what the fuck yeah. is this that's what dad could drop you off in the morning and come go play nine holes i'll see you in uh, see you in eight hours <laughs> <laughs> uh yeah so go have a hit of golf if you're into golf um it's beautiful go down to the river um Check out the, there's some beautiful parts of the river around there, like mm. the the Murray River. Um, if it's hot, go down to um, go down to the caravan park and jump in the lagoon, um, which was one of the things you used to do. Just go in. There's a little lagoon in the river where, um, on a super hot day, what uh, what was good to do was just walk into your neck and just <laughs> stay there, <laughs> there. <laughs> and walk out. Hopefully, yeah, right? Walk, yeah. out, walk out at some stage. <laughs> good rope swing. Go muck around on those. Um, and then uh, probably. I don't trying to think of i don't know what restaurants or anything i remember mm. when when we were kids the the uh, golf club used to do a good buffet that mum and dad used to touch up because mm. back in pokey days they you go out and i think it was kids ate free and it was four bucks for adults and they give you <sighs> they give you three back to play the pokies yeah <laughs> oh really <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah they had to put them they're getting the pokies, most of that so. three bucks but oh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> did, did throw up a couple of times leaving that because oh, all you can eat desserts who's gonna <laughs> 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 up to have just done five k's during the fun yeah. nine holes or whatever. i assume yeah. at the end it's like you go to the pub and then you go to ricky d's and get a fucking hot dog yes whole yeah. definitely on, do that uh, oh and visit the um the whiskey uh, distillery. Yeah, the whiskey yeah. distillery sounds great. If I you know, would like yeah. to really give good. us some free whiskey, I've never yeah, been to that. like the Murray River, like any of them. But between this and between, a ch- we did a Chuka with Luke. Oh, Chuka's like, gorgeous. I want to go to all these places. They yeah. sound like great towns. We yeah, yeah, yeah we got to do a regional tour. A Chuka now has a Beechworth Bakery, or did about ten years oh, ago. They're expanding going through there. Right. Yeah, so they right. they opened instead of just going. A Chuka Bakery will will have the same management. <laughs> yeah. They went, nah, it's fucking Beechworth Bakery. Yeah. Well, it's like Burke Street Bakery Burke Street here. Bakery. Yeah. 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 And another fucking everywhere. Get a fucking mad dog in ya. And, uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. So we have one more question. Yep. So when all is said and done with everything, uh, Barnyard, uh, you have fucking every show on Fox Sports now at the end of your career. You're a, 
a huge celebrity uh, commentating on sports. You're a very acclaimed comedian. When all is said and done, would you move back to... Fuck, what's the term? <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> My brain went completely blank. <laughs> oh, no. no we haven't back. brought it up These VBs so. have been supercharged. <laughs> uh, I might. It's... I don't, I don't. I haven't really thought about. It. I don't because I haven't been back there for so long. Um, but I certainly would like. It's the kind of place you could like. Yeah, I could yeah, see. Yeah. So if you, especially if there's a comedy museum, <laughs> well, yeah, that's what happens. Do the odd tour too. It'd be good too because uh, you know after a career you'd like to think you'd be yeah. This is uh, this is so and so yeah. Gigged with him. <laughs> Just be wow. that tour guide. Yeah. Put yourself in every here's story. A, here's a five minute set from Mike in hand of mine. It's <laughs> like, oh, actually, mate, I've got my headshot here uh, framed. Uh, there's a bit of space over on that wall. Uh, Over uh, the town hall, if you want to contact Andrew Barnett about establishing a comedy museum, please yes, do. Absolutely. We'll come down, we'll do some live oh, shows yeah. there. I'll remember the town name when we do oh. it. <laughs> All right. Um, uh, do you want to plug anything before yeah, yeah. you go? I mean, uh, nah. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm all good. Uh, we we I have been doing a podcast called the Professor and Barney Podcast, which uh, is on hiatus at the moment, but we'll probably come back around the Great time the, the footy starts again. Beautiful. Which um, basically the premise of that is that we find something that's happened in the sporting week and uh, we dive into the annals. Um, to see whether it's happened before and just find weird and stuff. And it's a very funny pod. I'm a regular list. Oh, good. Oh, yeah. Nice. That. Thank you. You're the one. That's good. <laughs> um, <laughs> the whole yeah. premise is basically set up so we can say annals everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, fuck, why didn't we think of that? Oh, uh, man. Yeah, guys, you guys dive into the annals. <laughs> yeah. 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 That's what it's called. Explain my Google searches. I misspelled it. We love yeah. annals around here. Uh, Andrew Barnett, thank you so Thanks much. Thanks so much. Yeah, that was great. Please share the podcast around. Yes. And read it on iTunes. Tell your stars. friends. Please tell all your friends. Let us know if you enjoy the pod and you haven't yet. Yeah, we we're love getting, hearing we're from getting people. messages and we love them. So. Yeah, it's yeah. really sweet Thanks. when people tell us they like the pod. Follow us on all the socials and all that stuff. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, we'll Thanks see everyone. you later. Bye. 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 See you.